I'm gonna show you how avoiding an obligatory trip to the grocery store that we didn't really need and using this and other things we already had on hand saves my family big money in the long run and you can do it too. What this stuff all has in common is that it was already here in our kitchen, not a recent purchase. Stuff that's been hanging out for a while, most of it half used or open already. Over the years, I have filmed dozens of these pantry cooking videos. And sometimes I approach it as a concept and I talk about different ways that this can be accomplished. I give some examples of how it works in my kitchen, maybe throw together a meal or two in order to inspire others out there. In this video though, I'm going back to my roots with this concept. And I'm going to film with my family who are on board with me a multi-day use it up challenge here in our kitchen. I'm getting some before shots of the state of my pantry, fridge, and freezer, and we're going to see how big a dent we can make in just using items up before we go to the store to restock. Because sometimes delaying a grocery trip is saving us money. And over the course of the year, if we can do that and make an effort to use the things that we've already purchased, we're going to see a savings in our grocery budget. It is not expected to rise above freezing for a couple of days. And they have already called for distance learning the first day back, even though it's a holiday weekend and we're still two days away from going back to school. McKenna, what do you think about distance learning? <laughs> it's not her favorite. But all that's to say, we're gonna be indoors a lot. We have plenty of food here, including snacks. And I know with the weather, we're probably gonna be spending a lot of time indoors. And a lot of these are open packages that have been hanging out since Christmas break. So I am actually gonna put this basket next to the coffee maker where it's in plain sight. And hopefully as people get a little peckish, they can go to these items that are open packages that we'd like to use up before we dive into unopened ones that are in the pantry. But we're also probably gonna be making something fun because if we're having a snow day, even if it is distance learning, doesn't that require a little bit of snow day baking? I think so. I have the best husband, you guys. He has been outside in the cold <laughs> grilling steaks and chicken because we still had some in the freezer and last month he made this like really delicious carne asada and so he agreed to make it again. It's good. It was really good. So he wanted to make it again tonight. So that's what we're having and then we're gonna like kind of scour the kitchen for you know cheese and tortillas and I think There's Ruthie wanted to make cheese. some rice. There's always cheese in this and house. Chips. Yeah. Yeah, I, we always make <laughs> sure we do not run out of chips. That would be a true snow day tragedy. For the carne asada, we use top sirloins, pretty um, inexpensive as, as steaks come. And we also grilled up a ribeye. We did not do the marinades with this. Good steaks like this just need a little salt and then cooked on the grill to the desired temperature and a little bit of butter at the end. So, oh, yay. I will ask Daniel to uh, track down the recipe that he was using for the marinade for this, and I will leave a link in the description box below, or I'll try to you know, type out some instructions or something so you can know um, how he made this. He basically made a marinade from seasonings and orange juice and limes, and let the steak marinade for a couple hours or so, and the chicken marinade, and then threw it on the grill. Good morning. It's a holiday. It is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. It is a snowy morning here. So we are delighted that school is out today and we have a really easy day. My husband and I are gonna try to brave <laughs> the cold and run over to the gym, but before I do that, I wanted to get something going in the slow cooker for lunch. And upon perusing my incredibly disheveled pantry, I found two bags of potatoes with just a few potatoes in them, one russet, and one yellow potatoes. And I figured I would try to throw those into the slow cooker and make a little potato soup. And then I also remembered that I have mashed potatoes left over from a meal that I made for a video that you will have already seen when I made five nights of dinners for a $75 budget for my family. And I thought to myself, can I put mashed potatoes in potato soup? I mean, I know I can put the flakes, like the instant potatoes, but I don't know about already made mashed potatoes. But we're gonna try it today. What you making, McKenna? I'm making some waffles. Some Eggo waffles. Yeah. And you are using the last of the pancake syrup. Way to go. Good job, sister. 
I peeled my russets and then rinsed those along with my yellow potatoes and got those all chopped up. They're here in my slow cooker. So now I'm going to add my mashed potatoes. This is probably about two cups of mashed potatoes. And I made these from the yellow potatoes. They have a little bit of cream cheese in them and butter. I'm gonna add just a little bit of minced garlic. I was lazy and didn't chop any onions, so I'm gonna put some of these dried minced onions in there as well. A little salt, pepper. These are Parmesan rinds, the ends of a wedge of Parmesan, and I always stick them in the freezer because sometimes dropping them in a dish like this adds a lot of flavor. And I'm gonna add some of the leftover carne asada from last night. Normally I would use like sausage or bacon um, or smoked sausage or something like that. But part of pantry cooking is learning to make do with the things you have and make adjustments. Even if you have a really great recipe, if you don't have all the ingredients, that doesn't mean that you still can't make that recipe by making a few adjustments. I can't find my chicken bouillon, so I'm gonna throw in a few of these beef bouillon cubes. And now just submerge everything in water. I wanna make sure at least that those raw potatoes down there are submerged. Pop the lid on, I'm gonna cook this on high and we'll come back and give it a stir and see what we have. Actually, I guess I better stir it up a little bit before I submerge it so all those seasonings get in there. Okay, that's good. My potato soup is done. These are the little Parmesan wedges that I put in there that help flavor the soup. So when we spoon it out, we just make sure that we don't get those in the bowl. I was going to add the rest of this heavy whipping cream that I have in the refrigerator that I need to use up, but I've already tasted this and it doesn't need it. It's already creamy and flavorful enough. I am just gonna shred up a little cheese so people can stir in a little cheddar cheese into their bowl and this is gonna be really delicious. It's gonna hit the spot on a super cold day. For tonight's dinner, I raided our freezer. I found these two pita breads that I'd had in there for a while and decided to make a couple of pizzas. One of them I turned into sort of like a garlic chicken Parmesan pita. I used some of these little laughing cow wedges as sort of the sauce. I spread that onto the pita and then I added up some chopped chicken, the leftover chicken from last night, and topped it with a little bit of Parmesan cheese. The other one I went for sort of like a steak and cheddar vibe. I used some jar queso as the sauce on top of the pita. I had five sad looking little mini peppers that I chopped up and sauteed for a couple minutes and then I added those on top of the queso. Then I added the rest of the steak chopped up from last night and I topped it with a mix of white cheddar and sharp cheddar cheeses. So those are in the oven right now at 350. I usually like to bake until the cheese is melted and then turn the broiler on for a minute or so to kind of toast the top. The other thing I found in the freezer were bacon things. And those are little appetizers that my mother-in-law makes. She made some at Christmas and we didn't eat them all so we put them in the freezer. They are made from bread, cream cheese, and bacon. And so we just always called them bacon things. And those are reheating in the air fryer right now. I also popped some green beans in the microwave so we could have a veggie side. We've got potato soup left over from lunch. So just gonna have kind of like a little snacky smorgasbord tonight for dinner and we're all looking forward to it. When it is time to do a little restock in your kitchen, you might be interested in checking out today's sponsor. It's Thrive Market. They are an online grocery retailer. They offer thousands of natural and organic products on their website and they are offering 30% off to new customers today. When I place my order with Thrive Market, I'm typically choosing items that fall into one of three categories. Pantry staples like canned goods, pasta, rice, oils, and seasonings. And since coffee is a staple for this mom, I also like to pick up my favorite coffee creamer. And since it was on sale this time, I grabbed two snacks for my kids, especially things that travel well as we are often coming and going from swim meets, from basketball practices, from orchestra rehearsals, and so much more. And third, specialty items that can be difficult to find or just expensive elsewhere. On the Thrive Market website, you can actually sort the products according to your dietary needs or your lifestyle preference. Things like gluten-free or vegan, or keto friendly products and so many other lifestyles that they can cater to. My oldest daughter loves to bake. She loves to make snacks to share with her friends, but she has a more than one friend that needs to eat gluten-free. So this time I picked up these gluten-free muffin and brownie mixes and also her favorite one-to-one -one baking flour. This actually came recommended by one of her friends that needs to eat gluten-free and she likes to make baked goods with this and other gluten-free items so that she can share them with her friends. 
Membership with Thrive Market comes out to just five bucks a month when you sign up with an annual membership. Plus, if you are signing up today by going to thrivemarket.com slash cmindymom or using the link in the description box below, they're gonna give you an additional 30% off your entire first order plus a free gift worth up to $60. So again, to get 30% off your first order with Thrive Market, you just visit that link in the description box or go to thrivemarket.com slash cmindymom. When you sign up for a membership, you're also gonna get a free gift on top of that 30% off your first order and thank you again to thrive market for sponsoring today's video mm. oh my god it is day three of our little use it up challenge still have not been to the store it is distance learning for two of my children one of my children is out of school and we still have plenty of food in the house so we're going to see what else we can use up today normally the kids make their own lunches here at home or to take to school but since we're doing this little challenge and we're all home for a snow day i thought i'd whip up some quesadillas because i have a little bit of chicken here that i can chop up plenty of cheese i have a package of tortillas that we really need to use up and I also have this little package of french fries that just has a couple of servings left in it. I thought I'd throw that in the air fryer as well. And then we still have apples and oranges so they can have some fruit along with those. And that'll be a really easy way to make lunch and use stuff up while we're at it. Another really important concept when you're trying to use stuff up in your kitchen is to eat your leftovers. I know it sounds really basic, but you would probably be surprised the number of comments I receive from people who kind of struggle with this. I have in the microwave right now the last helping of chicken chili. I made this the other night it's been in the fridge for a few days and I could you know make something else but and maybe it would be something that I wanted more than the chicken chili but this is what I have it's ready to go and it needs to be eaten so that's what I'm gonna have for lunch today and then we will have eaten all of that recipe and by the way if you are looking for a little help with this pantry cooking concept this was a free ebook that I put out just after Christmas it is still over on my website and the very last page in the ebook is this use it up meal planner. And it has a place where you can take a little inventory of your pantry, fridge and freezer and jot down some things that you would like to use up and some notes where you can come up with some ideas and then make a meal plan for your family or just, you know, a few recipe ideas for the things that you jotted down that you'd like to use up. I found amidst my baking supplies, half a package of Funfetti cake mix. I used this last month to make um, like puppy chow style snack mix. And all I'm gonna do with this is have the kids add an egg and a quarter cup of oil and make cake mix cookies with these. And then the other thing that we're going to make is gonna use this salted caramel cookie mix, but we're gonna add something to it. I bought a huge package of like Hershey's chocolate, like little miniatures for Christmas, and the only ones left are the Heath bars. <laughs> So we're gonna take those out of the package and smash them up and uh, stir them into these salted caramel cookies, the cookie mix, and uh, see how that turns out. Okay, dinner. I was going to make some salmon fillets in the oven and then some kind of like casserole or something, noodle casserole, but I just found out that they are having swim practice tonight. Even though there's no school, our swim team is a club team, so it's technically not a school activity and they can sometimes get special permission to go ahead and have practice. And quite honestly, my kids <laughs> need a little bit of a workout just to like get some energy out of them, especially my son, like moving his body just helps him sleep better. So um, I'm gonna get something going in the crock pot instead. And I have this bag of, oh, where'd they go? Maybe I already got them out, hold on, where'd they go? Here they are. I have this bag of egg noodles here that's like, it's more than half. It's probably three quarters of the way full, but still open, I wanna use it. I have these ranch steaks that were in the freezer, and I gotta be honest, I can't even remember what ranch steak is. It's got some fat on it there. I don't think it's a super expensive cut of steak, so I don't feel bad about using it in a crock pot recipe. I also have these mixed vegetables, this particular bag, has been in my chest freezer for a year. So it is time to use it if we're gonna use it. And I have just a little bit of heavy whipping cream here in the refrigerator. It's short dated, it needs to get used this week. So my thought is I'm gonna come up with some kind of like vegetable beef creamy noodle soup. <laughs> 
I don't know. That's kind of, that's, it's a working title. The title is, is a work in progress. There were two little steaks in each package. I was going to chop them up, but they're pretty small on their own. So I just left them as they are because once they cook, I'm going to take them out and shred them up. So I also left the fat on them as well because I thought that might add a lot of flavor to the soup. I'm going to add a couple of beef bouillon cubes. I was in a hurry, so I was going to use this Italian dressing mix packet. Uh, but I found this Italian dressing mix that I made myself in the pantry. So I'm going to use a little bit of it because I know that I probably went easy on the salt in this. And since I'm already using the bouillon cubes, I'm going to throw in the rest of this tomato paste. I don't know why. It just seems like a good thing to do. And I have a little bit of it left. Also, a little bit of Worcestershire. Probably about a tablespoon. If I can get it open. My veggies. Ooh, those are pretty frosty. Glad I'm using them in a soup. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna make sure everything is submerged in water, pop the lid on, let it cook on high for about three to four hours, and come back and see what we have to work with here. Confession. For the last few years, for some reason, I have not been able to successfully make beer bread. I can make all kinds of recipes that are much more complicated. I mean, beer bread is usually three to five ingredients depending on the recipe. It is a quick bread, meaning it doesn't have a proofing time. But for some reason, the last few years, I just, I, it doesn't work for me. So I am going back to the books. I have pulled up a recipe and I am going to attempt to follow this recipe to a T. And we're gonna see if I can make a loaf of beer bread to go with the soup tonight, because when beer bread comes out right and you toast it and put a little butter on it, it's so, so good, especially with soups. The recipe calls for three cups of all purpose flour. It also says 350 grams. So I'm actually weighing it out <laughs> to make sure that it is like perfectly accurate. It does not say to sift it. It just says 350 grams of flour. There we go. Next we have a tablespoon of baking powder, not baking soda, baking powder, one teaspoon of plain old table salt, and two to four tablespoons of sugar. It says just depending on how sweet you like it, I'm just gonna use two tablespoons. And it says just to whisk it together. It didn't say sift it together, it said whisk it together, and I am following the directions. Now pour in a 12 ounce beer, preferably room, preferably room temperature. Mine is still a little bit cool. And I'm just using a plain old Coors. Not Coors Light, regular Coors. Because when I've tried this with light beer, it does not taste right. Mix that all together and plop it into a greased one pound loaf pan. Plop it in. It's an industry term. Plop. And now it says to drizzle over two tablespoons of melted butter and then pop it into a 375 degree oven for 35 to 55 minutes. That's a big window, y'all. So I guess I'll just check on it after about 35 or 40 minutes and we'll see. Here goes nothing. A funny thing about this that I remembered as I was filming is that I actually made a video several years back about beer bread. I guess I need to go back and watch my own video for a tutorial. <laughs> okay, the beef is finished. I'm gonna shred it up and put it back in here along with the noodles. Actually, I'm gonna put the noodles in right now and make as much noise as I can while I do it. And I'm gonna add the rest of the heavy, heavy, <laughs> the rest of the heavy whipping cream that's in this carton. I think it's probably about a cup total. That's what it feels like to me because it's about a fourth of this quart. Stir, stir, stir. Okay, now I'm just gonna shred up the beef and stir it back in here as well. Pop the lid on. It should take another 15 to 20 minutes for the noodles to cook. Okay, friends, I'm hopeful. I am very, very hopeful that this is gonna be the time that it works out. It's gotta cool a little bit more and then we can slice it up. It is the last day for this challenge. I'm just calling it. I'm calling it the last day because I'm gonna to go to the grocery store tomorrow and I think we've done a pretty good job. It's been four days and my husband for our last meal in this little use it up challenge is going to brave the cold and throw some salmon fillets on the grill that I found in the chest freezer. We've had those in there for a few months so they need to get used. We'll probably just use like some basic seasonings. I think we have a seafood seasoning and then I gotta be honest I'm not really sure what I'm going to make to go along with it. We have rice, we have pasta. Ooh, actually, okay, I just thought of something. I have this still in the freezer. It's the last of the quick meals that I picked up for like a stock your freezer with convenience 
freezer meals video that I did, I don't know, back in like September, I think. And I, that's, that's the last one I think that I've come across. So I'm just gonna heat that up. And I'm pretty sure we still have some broccoli, call it a day. That'll be dinner tonight, unless I come up with something else. I don't know, we'll see. I'll just put a picture of my plate here and we'll all be surprised. I've often said that cooking from the pantry for a day or two saves us money because we are delaying a trip to the grocery store. And we're on day four of this little pantry use it up challenge in my house. This will probably be the last day for us. It's a little longer of the ones that I normally do. And we've had a holiday weekend. We've had a little bit of ice and snow. It's the kind of situation where in the past, I know we would have gone to the grocery store just because that's what everybody else is doing right now. And we would have probably wanted to try treat ourselves to just the right meals and just the right snacks and just the right treats that we wanted. So I actually went to the Walmart website and I plugged in some of the items that I know we probably would have purchased based on past experience. Stuff like snacks for movies, Pringles and Cheez-Its and Sour Patch Kids. I know my kids would have talked me into those things. Stuff for chili. I didn't have the ingredients to make that here, so I know that I would have picked up some ground beef and some smoked sausage so I could make my dad's chili recipe. Beverages like Cokes and lemonade for the kids to enjoy. Kind of your standards like bread, milk, and eggs. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm sure my husband and I would have talked ourselves into picking up a case of beer. <laughs> And just these items that I know have been frequent purchases on a weekend like this came out to $90.15. And that isn't even enough meals you know, and food for the weekend. I'm guessing that we also would have utilized some things that we already had. But by having the discipline to say, you know what, no, we're gonna use the things that we have and still create some meals that we can enjoy, we saved ourselves that 100 or so bucks. This type of challenge also presents a really good opportunity for a quick little tidy up of the pantry for fridge and freezer. Just kind of reorganizing the items, wiping down the shelves in the refrigerator when there's not as much in it, making sure that things in the pantry are visible. I don't spend a ton of time on this because when there's less to tidy up, it's actually easier to get it reorganized. Now, I am not saying that we use up every morsel of food in our household before we go to the store every single time. That's not the point of this challenge. I do keep an emergency bin of non-perishable items in my pantry. More on that in the another video. And I know some people actually function really well with a well-stocked kitchen all the time, but I am a person who is overstimulated by too many choices. It's one of the reasons why you guys see me in a lot of the same clothes over and over again, depending on the season until I rotate items out. And that's why doing this challenge from time to time is so helpful for my family and me because it really helps us see the food that we have, especially as we continue to use things and get them out of the pantry and out of the fridge. And we find other stuff that's hanging out in our kitchen that we can bring to the forefront and plan meals around that. Even if it involves a grocery trip later on down the road, it just makes things more visible for us. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to check out today's sponsor, Thrive Market, if you're interested in 30% off your first order with them. There's a link in the description box below. Check out one of these videos next. I'll see you there.